he talks about embodied cognition, which is the idea that we don't think with our brains, we think with everything. Because basically the idea is that we evolved our consciousness and our ability to manipulate ideas from our ability to manipulate 3D objects in space. So as we're like proto-monkeys going around a jungle on multiple layers, finding fruits and evading predators, the better we can manipulate 3D things in our mind, the better we fare, and ultimately that we can manipulate concepts, which means that all of our thinking is based on metaphor, and language becomes really, really important um, in terms of what we do. Um, English, some of the stuff I learned, I also studied English. Postmodernism, something people may like or not like to talk about. But I learned about modernism, I thought it was really interesting. Postmodernism, I thought it was really interesting. But it's kind of like, where do you end up with that? So this is some postmodernist architecture. And it's like, postmodernism is kind of a problem because it's like people ironize everything and then make commentaries on things but can't actually do stuff. And I think that what comes after this, which I learned from my dissertation supervisor, I think is a total genius, and he plucked it from architecture apparently, was what came after this in architecture, starting from after it called the pragmatic vernacular, and it just means like, do what people want in the place that makes sense and looks good. And I'm like, <laughs> start doing that, rather than, you know, constantly referencing things and whatever, then I think we're in a good place, and I think that's what design thinking is starting to work towards. Um, some other stuff I used to read about, moral philosophy is a huge interest of mine, but I haven't actually like reached any conclusions on it exactly. <laughs> but I think that like I think there's some interesting tensions in it, and I definitely try and bring it in as background to stuff that I do. But I just kind of really like the thinking about it. The hedonic treadmill. You might have heard of it. You might not. Basically, something from psychology again. We think money will make us happy, so we go after money. But then it doesn't make us happy, but we can't really realise that, so we just keep going after more of it, and we end up like this rat on the wheel or whatever. And um, but that only comes after basic sustenance. So I think a big passion of mine is to, to go for the people who aren't on the hedonic treadmill because they can't actually get onto that because they don't even earn the minimum amount to live. So I think that the conclusion of my ethics thinking was kind of like a lot of stuff is relative, but extreme poverty isn't relative. So that's a big passion of mine to kind of. Um, I love this book. I don't know if you've seen it. If you haven't seen it, do see it if you can. Um, visualizing data is really, really interesting. And I think that in a world where we are kind of manipulating people's choices all the time, presenting them with information is a great thing. And even though you're still going to be manipulating them in some ways, I think that this is a massive tool um, for helping, for empowering people, which is kind of what we should be doing. Yeah. Um, some stuff I've done, so this is my friend Anna, and my, she was my partner.